here's your calendar, and uh, you can look at the monthly view. You know, everything that HTC did just, you know, looks nice, basically. Uh, and we'll go into, let's see. December 1st, there's a call. Shows you the uh, the weather on your little calendar entries, which is kind of fun. You can make a new appointment, and it's still the HTC interface still looks nice. So that's good. Calendar system works well. Photos and videos. So here's a photo from our Thanksgiving table. Some uh, ginger, what were these? were ginger maple glazed roasted vegetables. This is a nice dish. So, you know, you can scroll through your photos and uh, you can tap and then boom, full screen. And again, you can, uh, you know, multi-touch. Photos look glorious. I mean, look at that. Look at that cauliflower, man. Look at those Brussels sprouts and those sweet potatoes. Uh, you know, double tap. Just really works well. Uh, widescreen mode by default there. And then when you tap, you've got your menus. And so you can play, you can do slideshow and that kind of thing. Um, you can, you know, use the photo in different ways. And then you can also share. So you can go one touch uploading, mail, messages, or Facebook. And so there's also Facebook integration um, as part of HTC Sense here, which is really cool. If you go to your people, so we go to all people here, and you can set up uh, favorites, which I haven't done yet. You can set up groups, which I haven't done yet. Uh, updates and events, so I can get all my uh, Facebook updates direct here, which is nice, because I found with these new phones that integrate with Facebook, I get to see people's Facebook updates and their you know, Facebook albums and all that kind of stuff without having to go to Facebook, which I really like, because people do use Facebook. And obviously, you know, I've got all these requests and all this stuff that I haven't dealt with, because I just don't like using Facebook, but I do like seeing people's updates. Um, and then that last tab there is call history, which I won't get into, you don't need to see. So let's see, let's go to, uh... let's go to my friend Michael Selvage here. So there are his latest updates. No events found. There's his latest update. There's his Facebook uh, photo as his contact photo. Pretty cool stuff. Nice integration of the social networking. Um, even if you don't necessarily want to, you know, use, go to the websites, the social networking websites. Music player works well. Um, you can swipe through the music, which is fun. When you have your album art properly loaded. Hey, that's kind of loud. When you have your album art properly loaded, it shows up. You can tilt the phone and do kind of an Apple cover flow style look. So here's your different albums and you can scroll through and pick something else. And you get the whole, this is kind of nice actually when you double tap from this view, you get the track listing so I can go straight to uh, Elephants. Go back. Now I've got that plan. Go into your library, and you can sort by, you know, artists, albums, playlists, all that kind of stuff. And then there's also an option to download cover art that you're missing, which is kind of neat. And then your stocks widget. I was at dinner the other night, and some guy got yelled at by, I believe it was his wife, his dining companion, yelled at him because he was showing her on his iPhone what the Dow Jones Industrials had done that week. And uh, she basically was like, put your phone away and quiet down. It was kind of funny. Uh, anyway, so there you go. There's your stocks. And, you know, you can obviously, you can customize. And then uh, Footprints is HTC's kind of geotagging GSM app where these were preloaded. So Eiffel Tower, it's got a rating. It's got the address. It's got some notes. You know, you can record stuff to go with it, little audio notes or whatever. Um, so there you go. Lots of stuff going on in this phone for sure. And so we'll hit the start button. This is where you get back to Windows Mobile 6.5. And uh, you can see the HTC apps in there, HTC messages, uh, footprints, you know, some of that stuff, HTC calendar. But uh, in general, you know, it's Windows Mobile 6.5. So you can get the Windows mar Marketplace, you know, Outlook, Office Mobile, all that stuff. Uh, Bing comes pre-installed now. I won't go into... Um, into the Windows Mobile here because this isn't, you know, Windows Mobile review. But I will say again that uh, the experience of moving from Sense 
into Windows Mobile is definitely a little bit jarring. And, um, you know, like I, like I said with Mail, well, I showed you already. When you get into the Mail app, it's too bad. Uh, there isn't a custom HTC Mail app. You can see I changed the wallpaper there. got this animated wallpaper. All kinds of goofiness going on, but really fun. Shows off the display. And you can turn it off if you don't want to use it, which is, which is cool for sure. Uh, the, phone, uh, the phone works well. Uh, you know, you dial when you call up the phone screen. The screen's big enough so that you've got your dialing keypad and then also either your contacts or, you know, uh, I think you can get your call history in there if you'd rather, but you can just scroll through your contacts up there or just, you know, dial directly. I've been using an AT&T out here. It's worked fine. Not the best sounding phone ever, but one of the better ones. Uh, and that's relative to network performance, obviously. It's comfortable to use as a phone. The speaker's loud, as you heard with the... Uh, the music there. Uh, you've got a standard three and a half millimeter headphone jack on the bottom next to your micro USB port. So you can, you know, use stereo headphones or plug it into your car stereo or use a, you know, a headset with an inline mic and it works great. Also stereo Bluetooth. The USB ports used for both data and charging. Uh, it comes with one of those modular cables where, you know, it's the USB cable and then you snap the charger onto it or take it off or whatever. Uh, also stereo Bluetooth, of course. You've got a rocker switch on the side for volume. On the other side, nothing because you take this back cover off to get to your battery and your SIM card and your micro SD card as well. Five megapixel camera, dual LED flash. The camera performance was actually a little bit disappointing. Uh, we'll get to that and we'll also show you one other disappointing thing here because this kind of came up. On the lock screen, so the lock screen is pretty cool because it lets you know if you have new messages. So I've got a three there and so I tap and I've got three emails waiting. There's a different icon if I had a text message. Uh, and then also the lock screen shows you the time and the date and then if you have any appointment reminders coming up. With the lock screen, once in a while I would go to unlock it. That time it worked just fine, but sometimes I'd go to unlock it and it, it would just kind of skip a beat. I'd sort of hit it and nothing would happen and I'd have to wait like a second or two for it to catch up. Uh, so even with the one gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon in there, obviously, you know, it's still struggling a little bit with Windows Mobile or the HTC Sense on top of Windows Mobile or whatever it is. Uh, you know, still not the, the perfect device here. Uh, we'll go to the camera, and the camera performance, uh, just kind of not the best. Um, yeah, let's use the storage card. Terrific. Uh, it's a 5 megapixel, like I said, with the flash. 5 megapixel with flash and autofocus, but the flash seemed to really kind of white things out. And overall, the camera performance has been a little bit laggy. Or, I'm sorry, a little bit uh, just kind of blurry. I don't know, like... This photo came out fine. I have, I have some photos that I took of people, and that was a kind of a bad idea because I wanted to show you how the flash whites things out. Um, this is a photo I took outside, and this came out, you know, fairly well, I think. Um, you know, not, not the best detail with uh, the shadows and, you know, the detail of the fence and everything there. But, you know, it's a cell phone camera. I think when you see the, the 5 megapixel stat, and on a phone, you know, this... Uh, you know, this high spec, you kind of expect the world and the performance may be a little bit of a letdown in terms of that. Low light uh, performance, definitely not good. Here, hang on a second, I'll take a low light picture. So there's a picture that I took entirely in the dark with the flash. And uh, you can see, you know, it, it kind of whited out some of the area behind me, the white wall behind me got kind of blasted by the flash. But actually in close range, and this is taken very close, like a foot or so from my face, it came out pretty well. Didn't make me any, any better looking, but the photo really actually came out fairly well. Uh, when you get beyond that very close range, you know, as with most cell phone flashes, even if they're dual LED, they can't do all that much. So, you know, the range is obviously very important. And then you can see the white wall, you know, kind of made different shades of blue by the flash as well. Usually you don't get in that in depth with the cameras uh, on these devices. And, you know, with good reason, I still think however good the cell phone camera, it's still a cell phone camera. It's not a, uh, you know, it's not a standalone camera. Um, Again, you can, you know, share the, share the videos, do all that stuff like we showed you before. And if we go back, also we'll show you the uh, advanced camera interface here. So you've got your zoom, touchscreen controlled zoom, and then settings that you can control. And uh, you know what, maybe if you're a better photographer than I am, and you know how to mess with brightness and white balance and ISO and stuff, you can get uh, better pictures than I was able to. Also touch focus, should turn that back on. Uh, oops. So you can go through all your different screens here. So if we go to touch focus, you can touch on the area of the, of the photo that you want the focus to be on. So I'm gonna get that Verizon logo. Zoom in, see a little better. There 
There it is. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, and again, you know, I can't stress enough that with this device, the, uh, you know, the screen size and just the form factor, maybe to you it's not all that different, but to me when I've reviewed so many phones in the past few years, and with the touchscreen phone kind of revolution happening, now the phones are starting to look so much the same. You get a device like this that breaks the mold a little bit, just making the screen so big, uh, but still keeping the overall device, you know, thin and light enough that you can stick this in a pocket. You want to be careful with it because it's a high-end device, but it'll fit in a pants pocket. It'll fit in, you know, the inside pocket of a blazer or something like that, and you can pocket it and carry it around very comfortably because it's not heavy and bulky. Uh, and I really just think it, it's one of the best designed, best looking phones perhaps ever, just in terms of the hardware look and feel and the screen. Uh, where it fails a little bit for me beyond, you know, that I wish it was running Android or WebOS or some iPhone OS even instead of um, Windows Mobile is when you get into the keyboard. And I don't know quite why, but the widescreen keyboard just doesn't work as well as I'd like it to. And I've actually talked to a couple other reviewers who are testing this phone out and they've said similar things. Uh, there's one sort of design thing that's a not a big deal, a little bit odd to me, is that the keyboard is sort of offset left with the whole virtual D-pad and the return button and everything down the right. So you actually kind of, you know, depending, not a big deal, but, you know, for me, I found that when I'm holding it, my left thumb gets cramped a little bit, whereas my right one feels a little more natural. Uh, I don't know if they'd, they'd sort of put some of these buttons over on the left side and some on the right, and it would be more centered, but then I guess you'd run into problems having the D-pad separated up. I don't know. But anyway, the way it is now, similar to like the G1 with its chin, you know, you have sort of a virtual chin here, and the keyboard's offset to the left a little. Not a huge deal. The huge deal, though, is just the performance of the keyboard itself um, in typing... You know, I um, obviously you're going to make mistakes as a person when you're typing, but for some reason the keyboard just didn't seem to read what I was trying to type as well as some other virtual uh, keyboards have. Um, HTC's keyboard on Android, I think, performs better than this does. On the Droid itself, the virtual keyboard, because it's a multi-touch enabled screen in terms of, uh, you know, not pinch and zoom, but for the keyboard, the virtual keyboard on Droid, I think, works better than this keyboard does, even though Droid has a smaller screen. Um, you would think that a phone with a huge, and here, I'll switch to ABC and see if that helps, screen would have the awesome, oops, somehow I switched back. So I don't know, you watch the video and you could actually see me typing and maybe the maybe it's more that I'm not as great of a typist as I would like to be. And so that's why I'm having issues. But in the course of using this for a week, you know, I've found that for me anyway, the keyboard doesn't work as well as some other virtual keyboards and it doesn't work as well as I was hoping it would given, you know, how awesomely large it can be with this giant screen. And again, I talked to a couple other uh, tech reviewers who were checking this phone out who said similar things. So take that for what it what you will. Uh, overall, though, you know, again, the hardware is stunning. The performance of Sense is really nice. It obviously, you know, I think it looks terrific on, uh, on the phone. This, the HTC apps work well. You know, the eye candy is great. You can do multitasking because it's Windows Mobile. Uh, the connectivity is good. I, you know, obviously, I can only use Edge on the phone right now. Uh, it's not a U.S. version with 3G, but the Edge works fine. Wi-Fi works great. You know, call quality is pretty good. Uh, it's just when you get underneath Sense and you get to Windows Mobile 6.5, you know, it, it's an outdated operating system in terms of look and feel and user experience. And so that's when you have to deal with that. Uh, so big thumbs up to HTC for just this stunning design of the phone, the gorgeous display, the generally really great performance of the multi-touch display. 
Opera Browser works very well on it. The photo apps and the music apps and all that stuff work great on it. Um, you know, it's just uh, the, the keyboard left me wanting a little bit. The occasional hiccup with some stutters getting out of the, the lock screen and then Windows Mobile underneath. So if you're in the market for a Windows Mobile phone and you want a touchscreen phone, check this out. It's the best thing going, much better than the HTC Pure. Uh, if you need a keyboard, and you know, definitely try the keyboard. If you're a heavy typist, try the keyboard before you buy the phone if you can, because uh, you might be better off with a hard QWERTY keyboard. Otherwise, if you're an Android fan or you're just looking for something new, you know, keep your fingers crossed. All those rumors swirling about an HTC made, you know, the Passion or Dragon or whatever it is. If it's built on a hardware platform like this, it's going to be hot. There you go. Uh, much, much more on the Touch HD 2. All the new phones coming out over on PhoneDog.com. And speaking of Android, all your Android stuff on DroidDog.com. Uh, that's John right there. He runs Droid Dog. He has a beard now, but that's him. That's Aaron. He runs BeeberryDog.com. It's our BlackBerry site. I didn't mean to get into a promo, but they were right there. And you should know, because you know, if you're into Android or BlackBerry, you check that out. That's all I'm saying. Till next time, my name is Noah. Thanks for watching again. Thanks to the folks at HTC for loaning us the phone and making an eco-friendly box, um, you know, a more eco-friendly box for shipping it. That's good stuff. It's important. All right. We will see you later. Thanks for watching. Hey, after watching this video, check out the new PhoneDog.com homepage and play the OnePod Bandit for your chance to win free phones.